LeBron James all the way in. Here comes Simmons the other way. Three on two. Simmons eludes the defender and lays it in with that. Certainly the length altered that shot. Not a good one. Steps. Crutches. Play right there. Orzekas from Jennings. Throw down. A foul. Irving. Oh, splits the defense with the dribble. <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? It's your boy Bernie here and again, like I said uh, and I promised in the earlier video today uh, We got some power rankings talk guys. So of course, we're gonna go over the power rankings So like I usually do with my partner Pete who's not here, but we're gonna do it anyway Let's go through the top 10 real quick. So number one, of course, is the Houston Rockets Number two is the Golden State Warriors. Three is the Cavaliers. Four is the Celtics. Five is the Spurs Six is the Raptors, seven is the Timberwolves, eight is the Trailblazers, nine is the Washington Wizards who went up, and also number 10, staying at number 10, the Denver Nuggets. They somehow always end up being top 10 in this. And of course, uh, notable positions here, we have Milwaukee at 11, AOKC at 12, Pacers at uh, 13, Detroit going down a little bit to uh, 14, uh, New York Knicks going back up to nine uh, to 15 after being down from 19. Heat are up. Jazz are down. The 76ers are down. The Lakers are down. And that's pretty much going to be it for notable uh, power rankings. But let's just go to the first one. And, you know, uh, a lot of people have been criticizing, especially me, about it. And that's the Houston Rockets right now. Uh, if you guys don't know, the Houston Rockets are on a tear right now. They went 4-0 this last week. Uh, before playing their games, before they lost to the uh, Lakers a couple nights ago, which I think you should be able to see in the background. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they lost to them. But, you know, going back to last week, the Houston Rockets are on a tear right now. Chris Paul is playing out of his mind right now. This is like the best I've seen Chris Paul play. And I want to know if it's because he wants to prove Doc Rivers wrong and everyone else in the Clippers organization that kind of labeled him as a selfish guy. Because I think at times, and I did it as well, I think at times he was selfish with his assists and his points. Most most notably his assists. Always looking to get points from his assists. Always looking for his teammates to finish his assists. And was more of a stat chaser than anything else. And I think I would really like to see a documentary on why this the Clippers team, and I know we talked about it before on a different episode, I want to know why the Clippers team underperformed. Because that team... In 2010, was supposed to be the next team. You know, it, it was the Shaq and Paul Gasol, or sorry, not Shaq and Paul Gasol, but Kobe and Paul Gasol as a super team. And now this new Clippers team should have done something. But enough about the Clippers, uh, you know, Chris Paul Clippers. We're talking about the Houston Rockets, Chris Paul. And him and James Harden have a very good combination. Uh, I will admit to some points that I was wrong with in the previous, is it a good or bad fit in Houston? If you want to see the video, it's in our NBA playlist. Make sure to check it out because it's a very good fun read in the comment section and also just a fun video to watch and s see how I was wrong in some aspects. But uh, the Houston Rockets right now, I think they're playing a very good style of ball that suits both James Harden and Chris Paul. The thing I won't, that I'm right about though is that you know it's James Harden and everyone else is a secondary option and that's where I think Chris Paul is benefiting from is because he doesn't have to be one of the main scorers because in LA uh, when he was a Clipper it was Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan a, one guy that couldn't get a shot and another guy who doesn't really have a good jumper and was just more athletic now that Chris Paul has a reliable shooter with him as a teammate he doesn't have to take all the shots which is something I don't think he really wants to do. I think he wants to take a couple shots, not every shot. So in that aspect, I was wrong. I thought that it wasn't going to mesh because of the way that James Harden plays, but I can see it in the other way as well, where uh, you know Chris Paul doesn't have to take all the shots anymore, and he doesn't have to dish all the assists. Now that he has another teammate that can do that, he doesn't have to worry about it. And he also has a better version of DeAndre Jordan and Clint Capella. I'll be very curious to see when the Rockets and the Golden State Warriors, if they do meet in the Western Conference Finals, I want to see that matchup and how it goes. If Houston can hold on to this number one seed, I mean, it's going to be a really tight race with the Golden State Warriors. I think they should be able to win. It'll depend, again, like I said, on home court advantage. Although it doesn't really matter anymore in the NBA, I still think it does to an extent. And if Houston's able to hold on for the number one seed, I think they will have the advantage. 
going forward. But we're going to move on to the second team, which is the Golden State Warriors, who only had two games last week. But, you know, no Steph Curry and no Kevin Durant during that week. But, you know, it didn't seem to be an issue for them. Clay Thompson carried the load. Uh, even last night or a couple nights ago, he did, had a very good first half where he didn't miss a single shot and had like 27 points. So, you know, like we've been talking about before, I think Clay Thompson is going to be one of those guys that I think could be on his own and maybe in the future going to L.A., in 2019 as a free agent, but we'll see where it goes on from there. I hope that uh, Clay Thompson's able to be on his own because I think he's very, very underrated. Like I said, I think he's very underrated on the Warriors team. I think he should be able to be one of those guys that could potentially go on his own and prove that he should have been the number one option. Maybe he does feel that way. I hope he does because I think that'll make a more exciting NBA game when the Golden State Warriors don't have every single weapon at their disposal. But that's... All I'm going to talk about the Golden State Warriors. Like I said, uh, this week they played a lot of their games. They played the Lakers in a very tight game. And that was the Kobe Bryant game, of course, the retirement ceremonies. That was a great game. Uh, you know, they won against Memphis. And I believe they're going to be playing the Lakers this week as well. And again, they're going to be playing the Denver Nuggets, who are also on this top 10 list. But going to number three, the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that went 4 0 in their last couple games. Uh, you know, LeBron James did very well, got a lot of triple doubles, proving to you why he is one of the best players in the NBA and why Father Time right now is losing to LeBron James. Because this guy is unbelievably like a gen his genetics are unreal. I, I can't believe how he's able just to stay healthy and not even garner an injury. You know, I watched a video, I don't know if it was B Ball Daily. Uh, shout out to him, I watched his channel. Uh, there was an instance where I don't know if it was his channel, but he was talking about the jumping in terms of when you go up. So when you dunk, a lot of guys will, especially I think Westbrook, or not Westbrook, but D Rose, and why he got injured a lot was because he landed, he lands on one foot, putting all the pressure on one leg. Unlike LeBron James, who's able to go on the balls of his feet and able to land on the balls of his feet, you know, easing the pressure for when he does press into it, which I think is very amazing and awesome to see that. You know, he's able to stay healthy for so long. Uh, just an amazing feat for a guy that is just probably one of the best players to ever play the game. I know a lot of people argue it. I know a lot of people will doubt me. But th this dude is just so unreal in the way that he's able to be, that, he's all, that he can play all five positions, and he's both a perimeter and a low post guy. I, th I just think it's amazing what he's doing, and I hope that we continue to see this kind of, uh, power and drive from him to become the best player ever in the NBA. And of course, we're going down to number four, which is the Boston Celtics. My Boston Celtics, uh, a bit of a dismal week, I would say. Two and two, not very good. Uh, you know, they snapped their their 16-game winning streak. Uh, Miami did that to them. And, you know, just tonight they lost, a couple nights ago, they lost consecutive games since their own two start. And they lost again to the New York Knicks tonight. Uh, what I'd have to say about the Boston Celtics right now is that they're a team that not many people expected to be in this position only because of what happened with Gordon Hayward and also injuries to Jalen Brown tonight. I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, the Boston Celtics have to realize that they're not, uh, that they're still a work in progress. Like I said, it's a very, it's not a microwave process. It's a very, you know, you have to bake it. You have to make sure it's the right ingredients are in the right place. And the pen, potentially we will see that. And we'll see if the Celtics will be able to offer Marcus Smart a contract for next year. Because, I, like I said, I don't think they're going to win uh, the championship. I think Cleveland will go on in this uh, little feud that, that's going on between the Celtics and the Cavaliers. But, you know, LeBron James is doing his thing. Kyrie Irving is doing his thing. But, uh, you know... Kyrie Irving is doing his part for the team. I just think we just don't have enough offensive power and rebounding ability. Al Horford probably one of our better rebounders, or even Marcus Smart is, just with his tenacity to want to play defense and get the ball. Because, you know, he's not one of those guys that will get a lot of shots, but he'll make an impact on the defensive and rebounding areas. And we're going to have to get a lot more rebounds from our big guys, along with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown at some point. But, you know... Number four is probably the right position for them right now. You know, they're starting to slip a little bit. You know, they still have the best record in the NBA so far. 
as we speak, as this recording is happening. But like I said, I mean, we're going to have to see some improvement from these guys because I'm not really confident in what I'm seeing before this uh, new year, before 2018 starts. And I hope to see something a little bit better than what I'm seeing here. 